The FV-4201 Chieftain was the best tank on NATO's hand until the Leopard 2 was introduced in 1979. With its success and shortcomings, it set the later Western main battle tank design criteria in any respect. It waited against a possible Red Storm in Berlin and defended Iran. Now we are investigating the Chieftain, a legendary British knight. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. Despite its problematic mobility, the Chieftain was the best main battle tank with the highest firepower and ballistic protection in NATO for nearly 15 years. Its L11A5 gun has paved the way for the 120mm main gun as standard in the Western world. The story of the Chieftain goes back to the late 1940s. By the rising of the Iron Curtain, the British Army of the Rhine began to face the Soviet tank with big guns and thick armor like IS-3 and T-10. Against the possibility of happening of the unthinkable, the UK had to develop better tanks. The first solution was to develop a 64-ton monster with a 120mm gun, the Conqueror Heavy Tank. Soon, the Western military planners realized that the heavy tank concept was obsolete. So, the UK decided to develop a medium later, later defined as the main battle tank, with a 120mm gun to replace both the Conquerors and the Centurions. By evaluating the Korean War experience, the British Army prioritized firepower and survivability over mobility. The new tank's main gun's elevation angle and rate of fire had to be high. It could engage the enemy at long range from defensive positions. It had to be able to withstand medium caliber artillery ammunition. Thus, Leyland Motors began a study on a new tank in 1956 and built three prototypes called FV4202 based on the Centurion Mark 7. It has a new turret without a mantle and a reclined driver's seat. The reclined seat design reduced the hull's height and weight. The design without a mantle made it possible to reduce the turret height but increase protection. Also, it allowed a higher elevation angle for the main gun. The FV-4202 never reached the mass production stage, but the British engineers adopted the new turret and hull design for the new tank called the FT-4201 Chieftain. The first prototype was completed in 1960. The tank was publicly unveiled in 1961. The result of using these two new design criteria was highly satisfactory. The Chieftain had a 280mm front armor that was 80mm thicker than the Conqueror's, but it was nearly 10 tons lighter. During the development process, the UK worked with Israel, which had a priceless modern tank warfare experience. Israel intended to produce the vehicle domestically. Even the UK sent two tanks to Israel for trials. But after the 1967 Six-Day War, London changed its policy in the Middle East and this plan was never actualized. In 1966, the British Army received the first production variant of the tank, called Chieftain Mark I, which had a 585 horsepower engine. These tanks were used only for training, and their engines were constantly replaced with more powerful and reliable ones. The operational variant of the tank was Mark II with a 650 horsepower engine. It was entered service in 1967. The Mark III variant followed the Mark II in 1969, which had an improved auxiliary generator, 650 horsepower engine, drier cleaner element, modified cupola, oil-filled top rollers, axle arms, and track tensioner. The Mark III III had a laser rangefinder, modified 720 horsepower engine, and a new low-loss air cleaner system. The final production variant was the Mark V with the 750 horsepower L60 Mark 8A engine and upgrades to the NBC protection system. The Chieftain Mark VI, Mark VII, and Mark VIII were the earlier variants brought up to the Mark V standards. Mark IX and Mark X were Mark VI and Mark VII variants with the improved fire control system. Similarly, Mark XI and Mark XII were the Mark VIII and Mark V, which had the improved fire control system. But they also had the additional Stilbrew armor, as well as a thermal observation gunnery sight and more advanced NBC filters. The Omani Mark VII Cs had the L20 sight incorporated the Type 520 laser rangefinder. These tanks were the upgraded variants of the Mark Vs. Oman also bought 15 new built Mark 15 designated as the Hyde Allard. The Iranian Chieftain Mark V 5Ps had improved mine protection and additional shock absorbers on the rear station 
as well as a 750 horsepower engine. This country also ordered the FV4032 Sher1 variant of the tank. The Sher1 had the 1200 horsepower Rolls-Royce CV12 diesel engine. So the hull's rear was reconfigured to accept the new power pack. It also had an improved buggy suspension. But due to the 1979 Iranian revolution, Iran cancelled the project. In 1979, Jordan ordered this variant following the cancellation of the Iranian contract. Different from the Sher1, this tank called Khalid also had the integrated fire control system, tank laser sight, and the number 84 day night sight. Iran also cancelled the FV4033 Sher2 variant incorporating Chabam armor. But this tank led to the development of Challenger 1. These cancellations have caused problems between Iran and the UK. Tehran has demanded the money paid for the program. However, London rejected this demand, citing the sanctions imposed on Iran. Currently, Iran is modernizing its chieftain fleet. This modified variant, called Mobares, has a thickened underbelly mine armor and more fuel capacity. Iran has also fitted new shock absorbers to the front and rear suspension units of the tank. Other modifications include a laser rangefinder, a more powerful engine and the addition of light amplifying and infrared systems. The Chieftain also has armored recovery and repair, armored engineer and bridge laying variants. We may mention that one of the most notable non-serial variants of the tank is the self-propelled anti-aircraft gun model with the marksman turret. The only front service user of the Chieftain is Iran. Jordan still keeps these tanks in its inventory but they are in storage. Also, the Iraqi pro-government Shiite militias have refurbished and used the Chieftain. Kuwait, Oman and the UK are the former users of the tank. The four-person crew of the Chieftain Mark V consisted of a commander, driver, gunner and loader. Its hull length was 7.52 meters. The tank was about 10.8 meters long, 3.66 meters wide and 2.9 meters high. Its combat weight was 55 tons. The 750 horsepower Leyland L60 No. 4 Mark 8A multi-fuel engine provided a maximum road speed of 48 km per hour. The range of the tank was 500 km. The Chieftain Mark V could negotiate 0.91 meter vertical steps, 3.15 meter trenches and it can fort the depth of 1.07 meters. It had a 120 mm L11A5 rifled main gun and two 7.62 mm machine guns. Thanks to its successful stabilization system, the Chieftain had achieved 98% first shoot to hit rate at a range of 1500 meters in trials during the British Army service. But the actual fearsome part of its firepower was its 120mm rifled gun. The L11A5 could penetrate the front armor of any Soviet tank at a long range. The 120mm ammunition were three pieces, projectile, charge and igniter. The combustible charges were stored below the turret ring level and surrounded by a pressurized water glycol mixture. This way, in case of being hit, a possible explosion of the charges was prevented. Using separated ammunition was a fact that made reloading easier for the small L15A5 armor-piercing discarding sabot ammunition, shortly APDS. The loader could wait by holding the second of it on his lap while the gunner fired the first round. It increased the rate of fire. The L3187 high explosive squash head round, shortly hash, could not pierce the armor, but it could defeat the armor targets by causing spall, which could injure or kill a vehicle's occupants. The munition did not only have good anti armor performance, but was also effective against fortifications and structures. The tank could also fire armor piercing fin stabilized discarding sabo munition, shortly APF SDS. But the British Army was too slow to recognize the importance of this type of round. APF SDS was superior to APDS. Even the trials in 1973 had revealed this fact, but the Brits ignored it. The misjudgment of the British Army has caused a severe setback. Until Ryan Metal introduced its 120mm smoothbore gun, the UK had dominated the tank gun market in the Western world. The smoothbore guns were effective to fire APF SDS. By missing this development, the Brits have given the superiority of the tank gun to the Germans. Initially, the Chieftain had the 12.7mm L21A1 ranging machine gun, which fired a 3 round burst of eliminating rounds to determine the enemy's exact location and range. 
In the early 1970s, the Thales Optronix tank laser sight unit replaced the ranging machine gun. With its laser sight, improved fire control system and muzzle reference system, the Chieftain could accurately engage the stationary targets at a range of 3000 meters and moving targets at 2000 meters. On the left side of the turret, in an armored housing, there was a big infrared searchlight whose range was 1000 to 1500 meters. The actual thickness of the hull's front arc produced by the welding of the tensile and cast steel plates was 120 mm. But thanks to its slope, it provided a thickness of 280 mm. Similarly, the front arc of the turret was 195 mm thick, but it provided 390 mm of thickness with its clever design. In the 1980s, the British Army realized that the ballistic armor of the Chieftain was weak against the shape charge anti tank munitions. So, the front arc of the turret was reinforced by the Steelbrew composite armor. This armor, which was also effective against kinetic energy munition, was applied only to the British chieftains. The early examples of urban camouflage were seen on the chieftain tanks of the British Army of Rhine. The mobility was the biggest problem of the chieftain. Its L60 multi fuel engine was developed based on the Yankee Zumo 204 engine of the BV138 flying boat. The engine was too weak for a 55 ton tank. And highly unreliable. The early examples of the L60 had a breakdown rate of 90%. Coolant leaks within the cylinder block were ordinary, which caused white smoke blowing from the exhaust. It increased the risk to be seen by the enemy. Over time, the engine was constantly upgraded, but as the engine power improved, tank itself became heavier. So, the Chieftain never gained a satisfactory power weight ratio. Its horseman type suspension was also insufficient. The tank had acceptably good road performance, but its cross-country performance was far from good. During the Iran-Iraq war, it experienced many problems. For example, in the 1981 Operation Nasser, which witnessed the biggest tank battle of the war, the Iraqi army's 350 T-62s and T-72s managed to destroy or capture 214 of 330 Iranian tanks, including the chieftains. The Iraqis lost only 45 tanks in the battle. Because of engine failure, many Iranian tanks had been abandoned by their crews without a fight. Many immobile chieftains had become sitting ducks for the Iraqi tank gunners. But we should consider the other facts in the Iranian defeat. After the Iranian revolution, the Mullahs had discharged or even prisoned a big part of the Iranian military personnel because they had been trained by the enemies of the regime, the Westerners. So, at the beginning of the war, the Islamic Republic of Iran army had suffered a lack of well-trained tankers and technicians. Also, its command structure had collapsed. In this situation, Iran could not use its chieftains effectively. Also, this tank was designed in the 1950s. Of course, since then the USSR had developed new types of munitions against the thick armor of the chieftain. Initially, Iran had 894 chieftains. When the war ended, only 60 to 200 of them were still operational. Still, the chieftain gained many victories during the war. On many occasions, they hurt the Iraqis badly. During the 1990 Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, Saddam's tanks faced the chieftains again. In the 1990 Battle of the Bridges, 36 chieftains of the Kuwaiti 35th Brigade managed to destroy 30 Iraqi tanks and hold the Iraqi offense for a while. After their ammunition ran out, they withdrew towards Saudi Arabia. We may say after the Centurion, the brightness of the British tanks in the international market began to fade out. But the Chieftain was still a shining knight of the crown. Its successful design features and 120mm gun have shaped the future of the Western tanks. It managed to reach a big market in the Middle East. This tank fought well against all odds. So, the Chieftain has deserved to be a true legend. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you liked our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel.